Hi everyone! For today's discussion, I'm going to be talking about letter writing in the 18th century. Okay, it is well known that technology is at the forefront of communication today. The written word still plays a part in conversation and in the spreading of knowledge, but it's more commonly on a te technological level rather than a handwritten level. In 18th century America, the handwritten word was the only way to converse or educate on paper until the use of the printing press became more widespread. There are three documents from the 18th century which can educate on vocabulary, handwriting, and literacy. The Young Secretary's Guide, written in 1707 by John Hill, gives a quick lesson on letter writing. Hill gave the manner and method in which proper letters ought to be written as well as how to write for different occasions. He also discussed how to write to men versus women and people of all social classes as well. He showed how to deal with professional matters such as seeking legal advice and as well as how to deal with personal matters. For example, one lesson gave directions on how a son should write to his father to acknowledge a fault and beg pardon for offending. The proposed letter starts out by saying, though I am unworthy to approach you in person, nor dare I do it without shame and confession of face, yet suffer this paper as a humble advocate to plead in some measure with you. He then goes on, the writer, he then goes on to apologize and ask for compassion as he awaited punishment. And this proposed letter is signed, the unworthiest of your children. The second example is the new complete letter writer written in 1791 by Isaiah Thomas, similarly gives letter examples to educate its readers on how to properly design a letter for different occasions. Thomas gave more miscellaneous and unique examples than Hill did, however. One interesting letter was entitled, From a Gentleman to His Friend Concerning Prejudice. One of the most noteworthy lines is, what we call prejudice or prepossession is certainly that which stands foremost in the rank of servility. It is the great ringleader of almost all the mistakes we are guilty of, whether in the sentiments of our hearts or the conduct of our actions. And this letter goes on to say that friends should discuss religion and politics impartially or just reasonably to avoid wounding the friendship. And this document gave many examples for unique and emotionally deep conversations over letter. And the final document, Models of Letters in French and English, written in 1795 by a Mr. Borney, gave sample letters on a variety of different, let of different subjects this document is also unique in that it first shows the French letters and then it follows with the English translation. The, the author mentioned that Americans were often interested in Europeans manners and etiquette and wanted to reflect the same in their own writing. These letter examples reflect more of a formal tone in its verbiage. One letter to the Marquis of Pisani showed the formal and proper tone I have some small opinion of these two letters you are pleased to commend, since they were capable of procuring one of yours in return. And the sample letter finishes with, As for my part, I shall with pleasure submit to be excelled, since it will be by you, and I will remain satisfied with the honor of being. This document gives its readers options on how to write to royalty and the aristocracy, a notion that was not often needed in the newly formed American states. Thank you.